What's up guys? It's me and Andrew. And I pulled the motor out again. I don't know why. I just keep screwing around with stuff. There's the motor. All right. So now we are down to the last part of the transmission build, the valve body. Everything's already clean. Got a whole bunch of upgraded parts. I'll go over those whenever I put them in. And you can tell this thing had some issues with that plate right there. Look at the size of that hole difference. Yeah, that's not good. So we're gonna start building the case parts over here and we'll put it all together. Right, Andrew? That's right. All right, guys, so now we're going to put the parking pole in the case. But first we have to put the new seal in and it's gonna go in this way. So the flat side is gonna be out. Get like a 13 socket and we'll tap it in there. There we go. So we'll get that in. Go ahead and drop this in. Put this in there. Start it through. Get it about halfway. Make sure you put that nut on there. Or you're not getting it on. Get this lined up into there. And you can start tightening it down. And that should move freely. And then you grab your 15 millimeter wrench and you tighten it down. Okay, back, only 15 I found. So we'll get that tightened up now. I wish they designed this just a little bit better. Or should you get one of those ratcheting expensive snap-ons? Mm -hmm. There we go. Alright. There we go. That's on. And then we take our spacer clip and snap that bad boy on. Hopefully not cutting your finger. So that's in there now. And that's gonna hold it right in place, the new seal. Then we take this piece, drop it in there just like that. And our two 13s, in case you forgot which bolts they were in there, it's these right here. You just start it. It's always fun to start down here at the bottom. There we go. Like I said, this one's always fun. There we go. Rotate that back. Then we grab our 13. Maybe. Yep. And don't tighten it down all the way. Leave it a little bit of slack in there. So it'll go down. Then you can tighten it. It's supposed to be like 220 inch pounds or something, but uh, yeah, we're using German torque right now. Good and tight. It is good and tight. Yep. There we go. And you can see the parking pile. Should be able to turn it one way and then right there. Transmission's park. locked in park. Let it go. Turns. All right, on the next step. Before we go building the valve body for the shift kit, we have to drill a little hole right there, which I've marked. 
So we are going to drill it from this pocket into this pocket with an eighth inch drill bit. So what I did is I taped up the entire valve body. I don't need any metal chips going anywhere that I can't clean out later. So I stuffed some paper towels down inside of the two cavities. So when I drill my hole, I should be able to blow it out and pull the paper towels out, pull it out and clean the whole valve body. All right, so there it is. Nice clean hole. All right guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the spring kit since I had to pull the whole drum back apart. I'll just throw this in the video. So, 3-4 clutch burnup caused by cross leaks and slow KD release kick down. So, I have the second type retainer. So I need to use the 14 new springs and high rev, I'm gonna rev it to like seven. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those in all 22. And I have to use the yellow springs, which I have here. So you just take that cage apart that's in the bottom where the pistons are. And the small side should be on there. So let's see if I can do this with one hand. Kinda not really. There we go. All right, so I got one spring on there. I just gotta do the rest. On the next step, we got the bigger spring cage. So I have the second type, this kind. We're going to do all 14 springs. And I've already done them over here. And these are a lot harder to pop out. So they don't lock in place. You just align all your tabs and that's it. So I got the HD2 kit for the 4L60E. We're gonna do a few little upgrades here. So the fourth accumulator, I'm trying to get everything done on the case first. So we got the piston, spring, and the rod in there. So it's gonna go spring, then the piston. All right, over here. So this is the old one. This is the plastic style, and you can see the cracks in there, can't you? Yep. So that's why we just get rid of those and we go with the aluminum style. So I already pulled the old seal off and then you got your spring kits. That's off two different years. That's why the different color springs, but we're not gonna use those. We're going to use the new spring that it said to use in the kit with this. So we are going to get one of the new seals Oh, it's too small. It's gonna be one of these. Yeah, that's it. So we are going to put the seal in, work it around, don't tear it, or you might have to reuse a old seal because there's not any extras in the kit. So we got that in there. So we already got our pin setting in there. And then we're going to put the spring inside of it. And then we want all these pieces, pieces, the little tangs going down. There we go. All right, next is the harness. Make sure you change out this O-ring. I've already done that. You probably should replace it because they get old and brittle, but I'm an idiot and I'm probably gonna have to take this out and change this harness out later, but whatever. So, I'm gonna make sure the flat spot goes toward inside the transmission. Get that in there and you'll hear it snap. There we go. And you push back up on it. Make sure it's not gonna come out. And on to the next step. All right, so you wanna come over here. So you got these really worn out check ball areas. That's not good, so um, we're just gonna get rid of that. And I have a brand new plate. But first, we have this kit right here on the HD2. We're gonna drill out to all these to 93, because I have a whole st high stall converter, full race. I'm gonna do that one to 101 over here, 
because it has the high stall converter. So I have to drill out all these little holes and they send you all the drill bits, except I didn't have a 101. So I actually, or it didn't come with a 101. So I got my own and made sure it was a 101 with my micrometer. So I'm gonna get all these ready and I'll come back to you once these are all drilled. So just to give one example, so we're gonna go for this bottom corner one right here. We're gonna go to that one. So you're just gonna want to That's it. And there's a little bit of burring over here on this one side. So I'll get the file and clean that up once they're all drilled. So we we'll see you when we're about to put it on. So we have the main pressure regulator that I left out in the other video. We got to put that down in there because we have the upgrade kit now. So we have the new boost valve and the new spacer, which you can see it's a lot bigger. It's a lot heavier. Hopefully you'll keep the pressure in this one. So we have the old one right here. And you can actually tell how much bigger it is because it won't even go into the bore. So we have the new one here. The old one we are going to get rid of. And then you have your old springs. You got some real tiny springs here. We got a lot beefier springs to go in the pressure regulator. So we are going to put some trans gel on here, put it together. There's also a little spacer according to the directions to give it a little bit more pressure. So we got that spacer. We're going to put all that together, the springs and this. So we're going to drop this inside of the pump first. Then we're going to use trans gel and put the springs on here and slide that down as one assembly. So we'll get to that in a second. Actually, this we could just drop in like that, but that one will stay. Here's the fun part. Snap ring. We have to push this down all the way and put the snap ring in at the same time. Which I am not good at these. Nope. We'll come back to you when we're done. All right, so literally I came over here to mess with it and I pushed it down and went down in the groove. I wish I would have caught that on video. So now I just have to put the snap ring in. Damn it, of course.
Like I said, I'm not the best at snap rings. Probably help if I had the right tool. Hey, look at that. She's in. All right. The pressure valve is in. You want to make sure that snap ring is seated. If not, and it pops up, you're going to wonder why there's no holding power and you're going to burn up all your clutches. Have to make sure that's in there. All right, so now we have the other one in. I could have put this in because there's no upgrades for this. So we're going to take this. We got the double spring here. It's a purple and a green. So we're just going to take the springs and we'll drop those in. Hopefully they don't, yeah, they might fall apart. So, maybe I'll use, we'll use some trans gel in here. Trans gel is awesome. There you go, now they won't fall apart. So we'll drop those in. All right, down they go. And then we'll go with the small end. Go in first. So we will... Wear your PPE, wear gloves. Don't do like I'm doing. Put that in, all the way down. Make sure it's smooth in there. Moves up and down freely. Just like so. not binding on anything. We'll probably skip this also. So we have this cap that we're gonna put on with this snap ring. See you when I get back. So that actually took me like 10 minutes, not gonna lie. But if you look down in here, you see that snap ring goes way down inside of there. The washer doesn't move, but the valve in there should move up and down. So it should not pop out of the bore. Snap rings nice and tight. All right, so we're gonna grab a new check ball out of the check ball bag. And we already have all of our holes that are drilled. I made sure that they're all deburred, both sides. Put the filters on so you can see the locations of those filters. This one, we drilled a couple holes in the top of it per the instructions right here. And there's a wire that's gonna go in there also. That is this, to keep that from collapsing. So we are going to take the case ball first, right here next to the piston, drop it right in there. Now we're going to get this gasket that has CA, it's for case. I'm gonna go ahead and put that one on, get somewhat lined up. And we could take this and put this on, get that lined up. And now the one with a VB for valve body, we'll get that one lined up. Take two long bolts. One up here in the corner and start it. Then another one right here. Make sure that's lined up. So right here next to this corner and this corner, that should align everything. Then we're gonna take this plate down here and the three short eight millimeter bolts, get these started. And you can see the check balls right over th that hole. So if you don't see the check ball through that big hole right there, you got a problem. So we have all 
all those. I'm just gonna snug them for now because you have to torque these down. So that's on there. Well, I could just leave those there for now because we're gonna build the valve body over here, but we got the check ball in here that's not gonna go anywhere. That plate is on there. And for the time being, we can just put this over. All right, so I forgot one thing. That on the HD kit. That needs to go inside of that one right there. So when the valve body goes on, that'll keep that in place, keep it from collapsing. So now we're down to the second gear accumulator. We're to clean that out. There was a plastic piston in there, but I got rid of that, of course. So we have this one right here. Actually, that one's a little too small. So we gotta put the new O-ring on it. Put that on. Make sure it's seated down all the way. If the plastic one cracks, you want the aluminum one. There's the part number if anybody needs it. So, according to the instructions, so one spacer for crisp, very firm street and strip, use two, full race, use all three. So I think since this is a weekend car, I'm gonna use two. If not, then I'll be taking it apart. So we got these two. So we're gonna put these in the bottom. Well, we do. Mm -hmm. Then we got the spring seat, put that down in there. Now we need the blue spring that goes on next. Then the accumulators, you're gonna get some trans fluid though. Get that all nice up and lubed. And tangs go up. All right, so here's the bolt you're gonna need right here. You need a long one and these two short ones here, just to give you an idea of the length. So this thing, you're not gonna be able to get it by hand unless you're a lot stronger than me. So we've placed our orange spring here, the blue springs in there with two washers. This thing takes a lot of force. So I just put it up here. It's probably not the best thing to use, but that's a lot of force. So, so I'm gonna hold it down like that. Make sure nothing's on here. And take my spring. Make sure that's still in there. Now, you're gonna want to line up this area right here with that over there. So we're going to take, oh, long bolt's are over here. We're gonna take this long bolt, short bolt, and short bolt. And I am going to try to not let it come out. Make sure you don't tear that gasket, getting this lined up. Here we go. This is a lot of force here. This started all right so I just want to make sure I didn't forget a check ball on the other side there is no check ball so we should be fine so we are almost ready for the valve body um, I'm gonna call it quits for tonight so tomorrow we're going to assemble the actual valve body and we're gonna go for the servo and servo pin for 
This, everybody I've seen that builds these and modifies them, they take and grind corners out just like this for fluid to escape so it doesn't hydro lock the piston. So I got to grind that out. And the length of the pin is a lot longer. This is an extended pin with all the Teflon seals in it. So I have to grind that down to where the servo is fully assembled and I put it in. It's not pushing on the band to stop it. So I'm heading to bed. And we are back. First thing we're gonna work on is this accumulator setup. All right, so first we are gonna take this right here and it's gonna go in this way into the transmission. I'm sorry, transmission into the valve body. Shows down all the way. Then we're gonna take the long spring. That's gonna go in. And we're gonna take the plug, which it doesn't matter which way it goes in. Let's get that plug in there. Make sure that the end of the plug, let's see if I find another one so I have to pull that out. Well, there's a, uh, there's a groove on both sides. So it can go in either way, just make sure it's up and down. So we'll get a flat head for that. And we have the pin. So we wanna put that back into place here. So we'll grab this. Get this pushed in. Make sure it's got a good amount of travel. Make sure it's straight up and down. And then push the pin in. Tap it down. Where it's nice and even. So that is in there now. I don't know if you can see it inside of there, but it's in that hole right there. Then we have a new yellow spring that came with the kit and this right here. So we're going to put that in and then the spring will go on that. And we have the cleaned up rod, put that on there. So we have a plastic piston here. We're not gonna reuse that. You want the aluminum style, so I got a brand new aluminum one. You wanna put the gasket on. And then we'll get some transmission fluid. Put it up inside the bore and on the pin and then put it in so where this cup is facing this way just like that there we go and throw a factory spring back on that and we'll take this Make sure it's centered on there. 
and start these screws. Then we'll get that tightened down and get rid of this off of the table. And that is done. All right, the next spot we're gonna be working on is down here. And on this part, we have to install a white spring inside the original. So that's this spring down here on the kit. You can hardly see the white on there, but that's white. So we're gonna put that down there next to that. We're gonna get this valve right here. So this is gonna to go toward the spring in the front of it. Put that in. Then we are gonna get the small spring put inside of the big spring. Put those in there. Then we're gonna get the plug. And then we are going to take the clip. Now the clip is going to go on the one, two, three, fourth spot right there. So we are going to push on this and get that put in. Might be a little ridge you got to kind of push through. There we go. So make sure that goes smooth. And we'll take it, push it through into the fourth spot. We have one, two, three, four. That's where the clip is. Then we have this solenoid here. There is a flat spot. That needs to go toward the outside. And we have this right here that's gonna lock into that flat spot. And then a small bolt to tighten that in. That's what that should look like right there. Shouldn't go any further than that. All right, next I have the Corvette servo. So we have this piston type. So for this accumulator spring, we can put a red or a white one in, but it's gonna be the white because of that uh, servo. So we have the valve here, which this flat spot is going to go inside of it, like so, inside of there. And we are going to use the white spring, not the red one. Put the white spring in there and you want to make sure when you put it in that you have this side facing up with the valve body upside down. So we're going to put that in there. And the pin just goes right here from the top. We'll tap that down nice and easy so that is in there you can get a good picture of it all 
All right, next we have this optional step here. If you want to add holds to first gear in any speed in M1 and go to M1 at any speed, we are going to go to this new valve, which is right here with a spacer instead of this old one. So we need to put that in, which will also go in with this new valve right here, and there's the old one. That one's going to allow me to use the paddle shifters in all the rest of the gears. So one and then two and three, I can have a manual option on those. So we're going to reuse the spring, put it right in here in the bottom one, the new one, two shift valve. Work that all the way to the back. Then the spacer. Then we have this and the retainer. So we'll get this in. And I think it goes this way. Put that in there like that. And we'll put the C-clip in, just like that. So that's in there. You want to make sure you don't see the spring crooked down in there in the bottom. So that is done. And we'll get to the next one. All right, so we have the next one here. I flipped everything over. So the new one has a big block on the end of it. The old one has that gap there. So we're going to put the new one in, make sure it's not chipped up or anything. The new one goes in. We've got the old short piece and the solenoid. Then put the retainer on. There we go. That part's done. Take these old valves and put these off to the side. All right, next I've cleaned this with electrical cleaner. Um, if it gives me any codes, I'll pop it back open and replace it. But I cleaned all the pressure switches and the contacts and the temp sensor right there. So you just get it lined up. Now you're going to look and see three of these go straight through to hold the valve body down. So we're just going to put two of those screws in to hold it in place. So I got two screws right here. And we're just going to put these down. Finger tight. So. There we go, that's in place. All right, next we have the bottom solenoid here. We got the spring and this piece right here. So you're gonna put the spring on. Start putting it in. Make sure it can go freely all the way to the bottom. And we're gonna take the solenoid. Make sure you put on your new O-rings and clean these. And get that popped in. I believe it goes, it doesn't matter which way it goes. Then get your retainer clipped on. Yeah, it goes either way. There we go. So that's clipped on there. All right, so first we have this piece right here. It's gonna go into the bottom here. 
with the spring. Then we're going to have this spacer that's going to be with the pin. So another one of these. Make sure it's lined up with that hole and doesn't turn. But we're going to be using a flat head anyways to push it in in case we do need to turn it. And push it in to go right into this hole. Once it's there, just tap it down real easy. All right, next we have the bottom valve down here. Remove and save the original spring. Install tight wound purple spring. So we got the valve here. Make sure that it is pointed this way going in. Then we're gonna discard the original spring, put on the tight wound purple spring. You can barely see the purple on it right there. It's pretty hard to see. So put that on. Then we have the cap. Put the cap on. And we'll put the spring. Is it through the bottom or the top? All these springs should be on through the bottom side. So there's that one in. And we're going to flip over. So a new valve up top right here. So we have the old style here, which I'll bring you in close here in a second. And then we have the new setup here. So we have the second type it looks like. And we're going to put that one on with the blue, blue spring, into the top area right here. So once you've already done it with the screw, you can take the screw off and then put it in. So we got the blue spring. Putting that in here. Then we'll grab the plug. I'm not forgetting anything, am I? Nope. Okay. And we'll grab this. And put that in. There we go. Now we have those two plugs in. All right, next we are working with the second small hole right here. The flat spot of this, you can see this will go outward with the spring on it. This way, going in. And we'll take the cap. Put that on. Take the clip and put that one down. And that one is on. And now we have the last one. So we have the long one with the spring. And this is the second one down here. Put that in. Big gap goes toward the plug side. Sometimes these are a little difficult to get in. There we go. Make sure everything moves real freely. 
Then you have your plug and your clip. And all those are on. We're gonna put that on last after the lockup solenoid. But we can put in this now. Put that into its bore. And now we can get to the case. All right, usually you have some guide pins, but I just took some bolts. So, so when I go to put it down, it should just, I'll make sure it just kind of sits there before I set them down. So I know it's gonna be centered, then I can start tightening it down. All right, I've moved the case over to this bench so I can get everything over here to clean and I can hang my light back up. But I put two pieces of wood underneath it to get that nice and level. So when I put the check balls in, they're not going to go everywhere. All right, we need to take this piece right here and put it in just like this. Get that ready. And now it's time for the check balls, which are going to go here, 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 there, there, and lastly, over here. And I'll give you a nice picture of it so you can see. That way you can pause it if you need to. Now with all those in place, we can get ready to drop this on. And you're gonna wanna guide that rod over here into the side. And then slowly drop it down to those bolt hole locations. Just like that. Oop. I'm just a hair off. There it goes. Yep, so those are grabbing. Take a peek under there, make sure none of the balls moved. Nope. Now we can go ahead and snug those down. <clears throat> I'm not going to torque those yet. I got to get all the bolts and their prospective lengths. Perspective, sorry. All right, now I got to get all the bolts and their respective lengths. That way you can pause the video if you need to see it right there, too. So I'll get that done and be right back. All right, we've got all the bolts in now. Just need to torque them down. And you have to take this one out right here and put in the dipstick rest so it won't go in the rest of the way. You can still put the other solenoid in there. Words, words are hard. 
and the TCC lockup, but we'll get to that in a second. And over here, we have the rest lock area here. So you put the tab back here, and then you put that on. You got to push down on to start the threads, and then you can put like a, a adjustable on here. Oops, don't do that. And you can actually check and make sure that everything locks into place. You can put over and park, make sure the parking call hits, and then grab it and turn it and make sure it does lock into place. All right, here's a quick example. So we have it in park. That should be locked up. Move it reverse, neutral, and we should be able to spin it. And then locks up and park. All right, everything was torqued to 120 inch pounds. So next we got the, the harness and you have the TCC lockup solenoid. I gotta change out this O-ring, pulled out the old filter and I got the new filter to go in. So you just get that, put it in there with some needle nose, push it in, turn it, and there it is locked into place. I didn't replace the harness, so I just cleaned everything with my electrical cleaner. And I'll get this changed out. And you got to put the sensor down in here with two short 10 millimeter bolts. It'll go there and there. Then we could put this solenoid back in and lock the harness down. And we should be able to put the pan back on for the time being because we had to do the servo next. All right, so the TCC lockup is in place. Now we'll get this last solenoid. A little bit of transmission fluid on it. We'll get that popped into place. Just like that. Get the retainer. Clip that in. And now we are good to start plugging things in. And once all those are plugged in, we can line up all these holes. Oh, that one might be on the wrong side. Yeah, I think that one's on the wrong side. So, pop this off. Oh, TCC's on the wrong way. Let me switch that real quick. All right, there we go. So make sure when you put the TCC in that the wires are on the valve body side, not on the outside. Just had to switch that around. So now everything should fall nicely into place. There we go. So we've got everything clipped in, secured, tight. Now we can take the rotty, ugly pan and put that on until I get my deep pan and my deep filter. But for now, that'll work to put it inside of the car and I don't have to worry about scratching anything on the pan wise. All right. All right guys, time for the servo. So I've got everything over here. I took all the O-rings and seals off of the pin. I ground it down already. Let's see if I can get that to focus. 
but I went a little too far. So be careful if you do it like I did. I just turned my grinder on, chucked it up in the drill and spun away. You just have to make sure, according to the directions, that you keep a round point on it. So I've got my clearance, 75 to 125, but I ground it too far down, but I do have a nice point on it. So I used one of the shims that you can use with the kit. I only needed one of them to get my spacing right. So you assemble the pin without any of the O-rings on it and you put it in, I'll give you an example, and then you check the distance with the snap ring in. So I'll show you that now. All right, so we have our pin, we have our spring, that's the factory spring in there. And then I put this together already with both of the springs in there with the shift kit. I still have to grind it, but I wanna make sure all my clearances were right. So we'll put the pin in. And this is a new spring that I got. Where'd the package go? So it's a new upgraded spring. Old ones, a lot, a lot tighter around. So get rid of the old one. Then we have our washer and E-clip. Just snap that in. So E-clip's on there. With servo. And springs in there, go ahead and drop that in. Remember, no seals going in, or you're gonna have a fun time getting that out, destroying seals. Now, I used one spacer. Then, make sure this is pointed out. And then your cover. And then your snap ring. So we'll get that pushed down. that in place. Make sure it's down all the way in there, all the way around. And I still have just a little bit of play, probably barely at 75 thousandths. I did measure it already, but I don't want to go through all that again. But that's where it's at, so it has a little bit of play. And you can tell that it's still okay because I can move the output shaft fine. So we'll take it all back apart now, put the seals in, and I'll go in for the last time. Well, there we go. There's the release I was talking about in the other video. So just enough where it comes over to this ridge on each side, and you'll see why in just a minute. All right, so we have the servo here, the original, and the new blue shift kit spring, and this. Now we're going to take this over to the bench, put it in the vise, and then put this on. So this is how I put it in the vise. Real carefully, you don't want to pinch anything. And I've gotten the snap ring in all the way around it. That's how I compress them. Then you can just see if I can do this with one hand. Okay. So, oh, let's see, it isn't down all the way. I gotta push that down. If I can. Nope, I gotta put that back in the vise. Right, so, you wanna make sure that that's down all the way, all the way around it. Which that looks like it's in now. 
So now you can see the reliefs by the snap ring. That's why we go that far. That keeps this from hydro locking on the inside of it and not getting rid of the fluid. Okay, so we got the pin, all the seals lubed up. Got the piston here, so carefully put that in there. Make sure you do not tear this O-ring. So nice and easy, putting that in. There we go. O-ring feels like it's nice and sealed. Then our new spring up top. Washer. And the E-clip. And now i got to put all the seals in and get ready to drop this in. Don't know if I forgot to go over this or not, but... You see the surface area of the Corvette Sonex servo it is a lot bigger than the one that's in the truck. You see where it moves. So another thing we want to go over is the seal that's on here holding it. That seal's great. This old one. So that was another failure point of that transmission. That seal was just completely gone. It's wore out. So it's probably not one to hold. So that's why we upgrade that to this style. So down here we got the red is gonna go on this one. And then you have a scarf cut seal that goes into this groove all the way around it. So make sure your scarf, scarf cut seal is in there. So we'll take that. I've already put a little bit of lube in there. Probably wouldn't hurt to do a little bit more. So get that real quick. So with all the O-rings, this thing is definitely tight. Put a little bit more on the pin. So we'll get this dropped in. So all those seals are on. Teflon seals, O-ring on the pin is on. Make sure you still feel the spring back. Then we have another one on the fourth here, another scarf cut. So put the scarf cut seal on. Face it outward. Put some transmission fluid on the cover. And on the cover, we are gonna go with the blue O-ring on that one. So this is where it could get a little harder to put on. Sometimes you're gonna need a mallet. Got me. There we go. And these go down just a little bit more. There we go. Now it's in there. And we can put the snap ring in place. And of course I left my screwdriver over there.
There we go. So we still have our little bit of play in there. But I forgot my washer and I just realized how much plays in there. I gotta take it all back apart and put that washer in. Be right back. All right guys, I just got super freaking lucky just cause I just did it. The ring actually let it pop out of the housing. So I'm lucky I didn't have to use one of my backups. But like I said before, I used one shim. Come on Todd. And now we can put that back on. All right, so we've got it back in. It moves probably 16th of an inch, right in spec. Snap rings in. We're onto the tail housing and we're getting close to getting this thing in the car. So we have the tail shaft housing here. I've already cleaned it. This was the old bushing. Completely gone. There you go. So I just hammered it out on each side until it fell out. This one was pretty easy. I just hammered on one edge right there across the bottom and just came right off. So I have to hammer the new seal on after I get the new bushing driven in. So, like I said before with the kit, the racing seal driver kit, it is awesome. Love this thing. All right, so back here, we have this sleeve. There's an O-ring inside of this sleeve right here. You need to change that out. That's what that looks like. So we'll have that. We got to put a whole bunch of grease on the end of this. We got the new seal and bushing inside of there. Got the new tail shaft seal. So we'll get some bearing grease and put it on the end of this. And then it is time to put that all together. They said this is for only the two wheel drive models that need this. So. Sorry if I'm not having the camera in the right direction right now. So I don't know, I'm not sure why, but a couple people have said to do this. So I'm just gonna do it. Here we go. And I'll put some inside of there also. Well, it's definitely not gonna corrode. All right. Then we could put the tail shaft housing on, which my hand is all covered now. Wear gloves, you don't have to worry about this. You just pull the glove off. So mount goes down. And she's ready for some bolts. Now that we got the tail shaft housing on, going to make sure that that gear looks like it's lined up inside of there. Just like it is. So we will get the sensor and I don't think this kit came with the correct o-ring for it that o-ring looks fine so it's just a tail shaft housing we'll get that put in into place there And we'll get that tightened down. And now we are on to the bell housing. All right, now we have the case seal for the dipstick. 
Push that down all the way. And okay, now the bell housing, which I'm gonna have to lift up in front of this transmission real quick. Should be enough. Yep, there it is. We're on the home stretch now. So make sure when you use these right here. Oh, move the camera. You have to use a Torx Plus bit. It's got thicker lugs on it, so it'll fit in. If you do not do that, which I have one over here I need to replace, you will strip out that one. So I have to buy a new one of these. So we will get these in. See if I can get it to, to work and tighten them up, and we're ready to meet it to the car. So we'll see when we get to that point. And here we are. A wild Miata showed up at the house, thanks to these guys. Ha! Uh, ha! Uh, gang, gang, Miata, gang. Oh lord! Mine's not over here, though. We can't. So thing. I guess this is the next. Get it running and. Sell it project. Eat it. Eat it into a pond. Hey, look, I got a pond over there. Hey, can we get it running? Eat it in the pond and claim insurance on it? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, we're not going to talk about illegal activities on my channel. Thank you. So, we have the flywheel on, the new torque converter, and the transmission. Time to put it all together. All right, so. Putting a torque converter on. Make sure you don't tear that seal. And you gotta have it drop in. There's one. Wait, where'd the transmission go? Hold up, that doesn't look like the same input shaft. Or I have two pumps up here. What happened to my transmission? Oh, yeah. So I found out the torque where I got for 200 bucks has a different input shaft. So guess has, who has to do this all over again? There's the donor I got for 100 bucks. No, I had the input shaft and the right bell housing, which had these annoying bolts right here which I had to go to my friend Mike Dunkel and go get this nice $35 bit from him so yeah I have to do the cleaning and everything for the donor parts to get this one together so there's the old bell housing Then over here is the new one, which is a half inch deeper. It's got the extra bolt holes for an LS. I mean, if I would have used my old torque converter, which was down there, it would have worked fine. But with that one that I got out of an 06 Trailblazer build, it's got the wrong input shaft. All right, guys, the next video is going to be me bolting the transmission to the motor. Hopefully a video of the fuel system and in the car. Bye.